Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. I would start to look like a person I do not recognize anymore. Um, it wasn't the vanity of it. It was that I was losing myself. He kept hiding his age for some reason. This I must tell you. He, I would keep asking, so how old are you? You look so young. And he goes, oh, I, you guess. <laughs> I'm just like, what is he doing, right? And then I realized, of course, once I realized how young he was, as to why he did not want that to get in the way of this conversation. So, yeah, I, I, I did not, uh, we did not really choose this. It was chosen for us. Sushmita, I cannot uh, tell you how lovely it is to see you. I feel like it's been way too long, too many years, and you look amazing as always. Oh, look who's talking, my bright sunflower today. I lovely. You know, every time I speak to you, that there, there is something that you've always had as a gift. You, your, all your interviews with other people, but especially with me, I feel like you turn it into a conversation that people, that resonates with people long after. Thank you. That's magic. That's magic. You know, I have such a distinct memory, Sushmita, of interviewing you right after you won Miss Universe. I was this cub reporter at India Today. <laughs> yeah. And I remember the two of us. That was the long hair days. <laughs> the long shading long hair. My God. Can you imagine? And it's, all these years and here we are and and it's just so amazing it's just lovely 26 years, 26 years. yeah yeah so, Shmita, you've had it's been such an incredible journey i mean such highs such lows you've spent the last 10 years raising your two gorgeous daughters but also fighting a, a, a very difficult medical condition and now you're back in the game, though you've never been away from the public eye, but now you're back in the game in the sense of having something that's out there for public consumption. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you excited? I thought I'd be really nervous, uh, but I don't know why I know. I, I'm very excited. I, I just feel like, uh, you know, every time, and you know this, films and scripts and people and collaborations, all well and good. You can do checking the boxes and say, okay, we got this, we got this, we got this in the project. But ultimately it has to be driven by conviction. Someone's conviction, you know, otherwise you end up na gharka, na gharka. Right. So um, there's tremendous conviction in Arya. Um, conviction of the director, the makers, of course, Ram Madhwani and team outstanding, but conviction of the actors. We, you see, because of it being Ram, he made sure that right from the gaffers to the DOP team, art department, costume, you name it, like us, we all saw the same film. So that nobody was directing another film in their minds, you know, down to a pause and a comma, we saw the same film. And we were convinced of the same film which has been magical. Um, the reason I'm also excited is because all through the last 10 years, out of which five were lovely, watching my little one grow up and being there 100%. After that, the, the last five years were pretty traumatizing. I mean, they, they really took me to the darkest places that I'd never been before. Um, and all through that, there was just this, this light at the end of the tunnel. I did not know it would be called Arya, but I knew that something good is coming and I have to hold on and I have to fight whatever it is that I am facing now because I'm not done. And I don't mean a film or, or a web series. I meant just something to look forward to, you know? So should I, I, uh texted Ram and I said, I'm going to interview Sushmita and what was it like to work with her? So I want to just tell you what his text was. I'm going to read it to you. Oh. He said, I have to tell you that she's been an excited, enthusiastic trooper from <laughs> the day I met her. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, two, two, oh, 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 good, oh, 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 on every front. Yeah. From being exactly on time to full energy to embracing my system of how to get to truth and acting, 
to managing the energy of a set, she's really a star. When she's around, the energy shifts to her incredible positive aura. I'm a fan. Oh, that's, that's a rave review. Oh, this, yeah, that's overwhelming. Hashtag overwhelming. <laughs> I, and that coming from my director, when we have finished working with each other for like two and a half months of seeing each other's faces and gone through post-production, sitting at home uh, and come to this moment. Well, he's a very gracious human being. He's, we all know that about him. Yeah. But he's an outstanding director. I he mean, is. outstanding creative man. His ability to understand that the temperaments of actors, collaborating those temperaments together is going to impact what we create. To give them an environment that is so peaceful. No one was allowed to raise their voice. No one was ever late, love. I come from a space where we've spent half a day's shift waiting with hair and makeup on. Uh, and that was my first conversation with Ram. I, when I met him, I said, you know, we had a very honest conversation where he said, so you do have the, the, the reputation of being difficult. And he I did? Said, yeah, he said that to you? Yeah, yeah, we're very, very straight with each other. One of the best equations I have ever found in this creative space. And I said, yeah, you're right, sir. I do have that reputation because I like to come on time. I like to leave on time. I like to honor an agreement. I like to be honest with my work. And these are very hardcore problematic issues for the actress. Um, and so, yes, sir, I am a problem uh, when it comes to that. Um, so he laughed and said, well, okay, these are the problems we have too. So I was worried if this is going to be a problem. And, and I said, well, I, everyone thinks they are punctual, sir, but I can only speak for myself, I am punctual. So uh, when we started working together, my God, the man of, a word, man of his word he is, everybody, call sheet, before time, we would come in, before time we would leave because the work is done for the day. Tell me, Sushmita, what was that first day like? Okay, you're going back on set. Well, it's been five years since, since your Bengali film. Uh, you know, technology has changed. Teams have changed. The way of working has changed. What was that first day like? So again, I go back to the fact that, thank God for the workshop, the three weeks. Of right, workshop. so you were prepped in a way. So we were mentally ready that the cameras will start rolling at any point. You just have to treat this as a theater performance. Character, like for example, the first day, before we started canning Anupama, I was in the house, in our house, Arya's house, for the 24 hours before that, to come and see where are glasses in the house, where are the glasses in the fridge, where are the glasses in the fridge, do we have enough toilet paper? If I did not like where the water was kept, the water canter, I moved it to wherever I would be most comfortable with. We each actors bought one element from our own homes and put it on the set so that it feels like our own space. I brought a wooden angel from my living room and put planted it in the, you'll see it in the kitchen. We became very aware of our environment. So now if we are doing this interview, I could get up, and go open my fridge and get a glass of actual water because mera gala sugya dialogue bol bol gaya. And the camera would follow me. That's not how it's scripted. You see? Yeah. So, um, luckily, for, because of the workshop, I did not come in like, oh my God, I'm facing the camera after so many years. I came in like, camera hai ka? You know, because they, they're very, very particular that the camera must not come intrusively into an actor's space. So you are with a character, camera's job to zoom in if it has to, but it will not interfere with us. That's incredible. Like I, I, I cannot speak enough about this. Uh, for the first time in my career, I, I take immense pride in the fact that I did not act, I felt. You see, when you're canning something like this and it's an intense story with a lot of Rona Dona, 
but you are not allowed glycerin because there is no cut you see so you have walked into a scene laughing and happy and then you are given a bad news and you are shattered it's happening in one take so i went running to ram and to sand uh, sandeep modi and i went to uh, vinod rawat all the three directors and i said but mere aankh mein pani nahi aa raha hai so he said mat roiye phir if you didn't feel it don't show it and it hit me that dude they mean this Mm-hmm. we're not trying to impress someone uh, an emotion we're not trying to impress an emotion on someone you have to feel it so i went back and i came back into the scene and i realized they had also changed a few things because they realized that the actors are not feeling it we are missing something so they changed the smell of the sets they changed the smell yeah agarbatti smells because that has a way of making you calm down and make you feel things deeper than smelling paint of a set you know what i'm trying to get yeah. to it's yeah. it's incredible how they aided the process and that was it from that moment on every shot you will see of all of us actors love when we are shattered we are shattered they've had to come and shake us up play chunari chunari in the background for us to get out of that zone we were so moved by a, a moment that we didn't know how to get out of it how lovely all of our has been shot like that we're really proud of this babu very proud of it tell me what what did you enjoy of course the, the process and all of it but what do you like sushmita about the bollywood that exists now and what do you miss about the bollywood that you started with now nice question um what i love about bollywood now is uh, suddenly content is king we have that there's of course the old school belief still uh, your friday release is not withstanding your rate card still being up there your hits and misses still dictating your caliber as an actor and your future in the industry all of that aside it's incredible the com- amount of um how liberal the language of cinema is now becoming it's allowing people to explore on all different aspects you know uh, be that the writing be that the execution be that the direction be that the actors um getting an opportunity to go beyond that girl meet boy space uh it's wonderful also the younger crowd is now so aware of world cinema and what's being put out there uh, they're not willing to just take anything for face value or an actor's face value you know uh, which is lovely what do i miss is the intimacy uh, of the years gone by 90s everything um as actors we did not have the high tech technology maybe we did not have the insurance companies insuring us uh, we did not have elaborate contracts we had the word of mouth in and respecting our word space the relationship with media off the record was off the record right you know, we had relationships where a word from each other meant so much all that has become extremely lost somewhere it's become very commercial and very open ended it's it's a full blown business today i miss the human connect yeah yeah businesses can be a little more clinical yes clinical that's the word you know <laughs> yeah. yeah uh tell me sushmita in these last 10 years you know you said that the last five was especially more, more traumatic the first five that was a choice you made you wanted to raise your daughters you know uh, in these last five years did you ever have a sort of a dark night of the soul did you ever have a moment when it just got so overwhelming that you felt like i'm never going to get out of it and how did you overcome that how do you do this every time yeah you you always ask questions which no one else does um no i had more than one such night uh, definitely i had been to london to get my sign act and test done and that was my only hope that maybe just maybe they've made a mistake in the diagnosis 
Um, and once the cyanactin test came back, the results, they confirmed I would be steroid dependent for life. And I had to wear a bracelet that said, in an emergency, I have to be given cortisone first and all of that. And that I would start to look like a person I do not recognize anymore. Um, it wasn't the vanity of it. It was that I was losing myself. And there was, that was it. There was nothing you could do about it. Oh, I, I broke down and broke down to, to a level where for the first time in my life, uh, I was okay with my children hearing me bawl like that. They all think I'm this tough mama who can take on anything and nothing moves me. They, they saw very shattered me um, that day after this London trip. And then I will never be able to completely say in words what people did for me because it just is impossible. But I was really sad sack feeling this world is over and I posted something on Instagram that day. And I've saved images of those comments and for some strange reason, those comments started with, why are you sounding like this? This is not you, you know? It was just a very strange thing that happened. And from there started the comments of, I lost my father. I was going, thinking my life is over. And then you came and said this in this interview. And I pulled myself up and I went back and did this. Somebody said something, somebody said something. They, they took me back 20 years of my life and they reintroduced me to who I am. And I was just like, what the hell am I doing? Sitting here sobbing my lungs out. There's so much of goodwill and people who believe in me and I don't believe in me right now. So I said, no, 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 this is not happening. So when you ask me, how did, did I fix it? I took in, I soaked in all of this energy that came to me. Uh, and I washed my face and my moon face off of all the makeup I had from an event I had just finished, looked at myself in the mirror and said, day one, we're going to get back. If, if this is the end, let it be an end that is dynamic. Let it not be, I have a sad sack, this is going all wrong, not like this. And uh, that's it. Then my children never saw me ball like that again. But that was that was the day I really was shattered. That's wonderful, though, and and you stayed the course and kept yourself up and and yes. it. I mean, I mean, it's a miracle. You don't know that the, the the doctor from Cleveland who finally confirmed that my adrenals had woken up and that I was no longer to be on on steroids and that I didn't have the disease anymore. He's telling me, Sushmita, thirty five years of me in this business. Being a, do a doctor, I have never had the privilege to tell somebody that their adrenals have woken up. It's just one in a billion cases. And I was sitting there so numb, Manupama, so numb, that I kept thinking to myself, oh my God, I didn't think it would be this brilliant. I thought I was going to get through it one way or another and whatever, but that it would completely go away and it would give me another fair. I think it was needed also, love. We become so jaded with so many things that we take for granted that something like this shakes you up and makes you revisit the love you have for life. And then you come back with guns blazing and say, come on, where's life? Bring it on. Ready for it. <laughs> and, and speaking of, of Instagram, Sushmita, you... You know, your romance with Roman has to be sort of a modern fairy tale. <laughs> I, I, you know, when I heard you talk about it, I was like, wait, what? They met on Instagram? That's, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. How, how did you know from all the thousands of people who probably DM you, you've got millions of followers. How did you know he's the one? Because of the serendipity. I've spoken about this. I don't check my DMs. Because I, I was so uh, technically challenged that I thought if I open a direct message, that means I've allowed the person to start communicating with me. So I never opened direct messages. Of course, I learned that's not the case later. But at that point, I was shouting at somebody in the house because he had just broken a glass. <laughs> and 
I had a touch screen phone in front of me and I was just doing this scrolling uh, direct messages and I don't know why saying something to him, I accidentally have pressed and opened this message. And there is a gentleman there playing the guitar and, and saying the loveliest things. And I'm thinking, he gonna, I opened a DM, you know, and then um, there was this very good looking, a sweetheart of a man who just very honestly and, and very unaffectedly was telling me something. And so I responded back to him and forgot about it. And from there started a conversation because I, I truly believe niceness begets niceness. He was so nice and so open and so kind. Uh, and initially I, I used to be just like, and so he kept hiding his age for some reason. This I must tell you. He, I would keep asking, so how old are you? You look so young. And he goes, oh, I, you guess. <laughs> I'm just like, what is he doing, right? And then I realized, of course, once I realized how young he was, as to why he did not want that to get in the way of this conversation. So, yeah, I, I, I did not, uh, we did not really choose this. It was chosen for us. It was very destined. That's amazing. It's really amazing. You know, I, I also have to ask you, Sushmita, mm -hmm. our defining image of you is, of course, that win at Miss Universe. And, and, and you know, your, 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 yeah, the R. <laughs> And for so many years, we've, you know, your beauty has been celebrated. You're, we, we've talked about, you know, how, I mean, you were the first Indian woman to, to get that far. And, and, you know, it was, and I was just wondering, when there's so much conversation about looks, what is it like for an actor to get older? You know, how do you make peace with, with what, all that comes with it, with the kind of roles, you know, how, how do you process getting older in a business which is so notoriously ageist? Brilliant question. You can't really process it. You have to accept that these are, um, for example, you, you want to compete at Miss Universe, you have to be five feet, eight and above. It's a prerequisite, right? So this is a prerequisite that has been over the years come down as whatever. And yet, As you get older, you gain something that you never have when you're in your 20s. Yeah. Experience. A level of handling your sense of maturity. You have more depth and substance. And now if you have depth and substance with some wrinkles and some lines and some, well, in my case, I believe that, that it adds to your character. It's not the ground rule. That's not how they accept it. I mean, I still would look at myself with um, some of my uh, not so complimenting fa facial lines and say, is there a way for us to remove it? Is there a way for us to take that out? I'd still do that because I understand the prerequisite of the business. But having said which, if you were to take away my depth and substance and just give me great beauty and make me Miss Universe, I would not settle for that today. I rather just, I've given uh, my audiences and people at large 26 years of my life and shared with them a part of me which is far deeper than the way I look. So I am one of those blessed few where people see beauty in that. And they always have consistently. I'm very, very blessed. Yeah. Tell me, finally, Sushmita, you, um, like you said, have been to very, have been in very dark places. Yes. Uh, you know, right now, it's it's a tough situation on everybody. People's circumstances are different. Uh, some of us are more fortunate than others, but I think everybody's dealing with some level of anxiety, some level of just uncertainty, and. Given your experience, Sushmita, what would be your advice to everyone out there? Like, how do you just take that one day at a time and keep moving with the positivity that you do? I mean, it's amazing what you've done. Um, thank you, my love. Um, great, um, the greatest advice I can give with all my heart is 
just look forward. There is nothing I can say to you today which would fit into the situation you are in. Nobody can because that situation is unique to you. Um, we have different kinds of problems in this lockdown. And then you, if you can, this helps me, so I'm sharing it. If you can at all times be aware of how much better off you are, no matter how bad off you are. There is someone who has just lost a very dear one in the hospital and they didn't even get to say goodbye. You compare that to your situation and you know that there is hope. There's going to be things that will turn around. They will change and hopefully change for the better. But if you start giving it up at this point, become cruel to other people, become cruel to animals, to nature. This is the very reason we are here to begin with. Um, this is the correction mode. So at this point, because this is not the place where you lose your heart and you start thinking, oh, the world is doomed. No, the world is correcting itself. And you're privileged enough to be on the right side of that correction. And you, we all are, if you ask me. Because every time I look around and say, oh my God, thank God, this didn't happen in my life or, or in my family or to my loved ones, thank God. In that thank God and gratitude, you move one day at a time closer to a resolution and to better times. And better times always come, Jan Mary. They always come. <laughs> That's lovely. Just speaking of animals, I saw something skitter by. What was it? A dog? Yes, yes. He's called Darling. Oh. Rightfully so. He is now 14 years old. He is my second baby, actually. So there's Brene, huh. then there's Darling, then there's Alisa. Ah. So Darling is a miniature poodle who is yeah, very small. I just saw yeah. the corner of my eye, I saw something move. Oh, Roman is signaling to me, do not disturb him, he's sleeping. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Darling's getting beauty sleep. We will not interrupt. No, we, we, we will not. Listen, I can't wait to see Arya. It was so lovely to reconnect with you. I love you so, so, so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for this. You. Big hug virtual. Yes, and please watch Arya, okay? okay? And give me your honest feedback, which you always do. I will. Thank you. Well, if you like videos like these, and if you like this video, do subscribe to Film Companion. Lots of love.